realized my parents were missing, I went to, I got my bike and my bike was like broken. So I had to like use my tools to fix it. Um, in that moment, I felt really, really scared and sad because they're my parents and I didn't know where they were. And um, so, so what happened is I, I just woke up and then I, I looked in my parents' bedroom because I've been downstairs and they weren't there. So I went up in their bedroom and there was just piles of ashes there. And I, and I thought to myself like, what happened? How, how am I gonna, what, what happened? Well, first of all, I got in my car and went to my friend's house. So I woke up at around six o'clock, six o'clock, yeah. And I got up, did my normal daily schedules, right? I got up, brushed my teeth, washed my face. I go downstairs, right? And in the kitchen, I have a carpet and I see a big black ashy looking puddle. What I tried to use my phone but it did there's no cell service so but none of the stuff was moved and my dogs were there just looking at me which is kind of weird but they, that must have signaled that they haven't been walked yet because my dad walks them in the morning but they were they must have haven't been walked yet so i went straight to their houses and was hoping they would still be there and i got lucky because they were i thought that i should um go to the store and get some food, but then I realized my cousin, he has a lot of food at his house, so I could drive there. I was sad. The lights were on, but there was also another big pile of ashy looking puddle. And I think, okay, what the heck is this? Then I went to my neighbor's house, stole their golf cart, went around the block like five times. Then I went to the store, got some canned foods. I made an army of little children. But my sister, she's probably just downstairs um, sleeping, so yeah. I don't know what to do, so I call my friend, my neighbor actually, and I ask her, you know, are your parents home? And she's like, no, there's a big pile of ashy looking stuff on the floor in their bedroom. Yeah, so I didn't really have anyone to share my feelings with, so um, I just shared my feelings with myself, I guess, and um, I sat there crying for like 30 minutes. I beat at her like three times and she has siblings. She says that she's the oldest, she's 12. She has a five-year-old sister and an infant. She gets them in the car, puts them in the car seat. You know, she sits in the front with me or in the passenger seat. And I drive out of her driveway into the cul-de-sac and up the drive, up my driveway. I bring them in the house. Oh, we all went to get food because we thought there would be a shortage. I turn on the TV and I see there aren't any grown-ups like there would normally be, like the news person, the weather person. Um, we picked up my other friends in their car, but I see a about 13-year-old looking boy. He comes onto the TV and he says that all of the parents in the world have disappeared. Oh, we just raided the stores, like, took everything out. So, I wanted to make sure our powder plants wouldn't melt down. After all, they weren't manned by anybody, so I got a team of kids together. So we snuck in the millstone power plant. There was nobody there. The place wasn't running. Everything had shut down on its own. And we read up on all the signs, danger here, danger there. In the containment center for the nuclear waste, it would hold it for 50 years. That's how long we had before we had to figure out what we had to do with it. So we were safe for now. We just had to hope that kids in other places did the same thing. And guess what, they did. Adults, I have been noticing that we've been getting a lot more fish here. So I've been working now coordinating how much fish we should catch so we don't catch more than we need, which could result in us overfishing again. And it's working. We're actually saving ourselves while leaving enough fish to not topple the food chain. Know that windmill and 
middle of Quinnipiac River. You know, the one you see when we're going over the bridge. I figured we gotta get that thing working. And we did. And it powered a lot of homes in that part of the lake. <laughs> Niagara Falls. Water turns on. A beauty stick. Do you know how much electricity they create there? Well, let me tell you. It's enough to power the upper east coast of the United States and a good portion of eastern Canada. That is a lot of electricity. You don't want to touch that wire. You know what will happen, you'll be like <clears throat> So, we figured out how to turn the electricity back on and get it all moving again. That meant we could use our freezers and not let our ice cream melt and our refrigerators. And we have lights! And best of all, we have video games! And my favorite game is... Fortnite! And believe me, I played a lot of it. It took months before we had that again. I was so grateful. And thanks to Niagara Falls, I got Fortnite and ice cream. So, I'm on with Steve, where we are trying to use algae to get the suitable electricity to charge the cell phone. We were working for so long, but then we came through a breakthrough and figured out how to use algae as a biomass to charge phones. I couldn't use my cell phone because nothing was powering the cell phone tower. I needed my cell phone and we had to communicate with kids all over the world. So, we hooked solar panels to the cell phone tower with battery storage. So we hooked the solar panels to the cell towers and kids all over the earth did the same thing. So now you can call people and coordinate things. And I can talk to my friends, which I like to do. The moment he set it on the table, we kind of eyed it suspiciously because, well, it's not, it doesn't look like something we normally eat. But we were starving, so one day when we were kind of short on food, Landon decided to cook and he just found whatever was we had. So we had a couple cans of beans and some raw Greek yogurt. So because there's nothing else, he put those two together and served it to us. <laughs> Putting it nicely, it tasted worse than vomit. So, my cooking might have not have been the greatest, but I'm still learning. But the moment Kieran bit into it, he made a face that looked kind of deformed. Every one of you said that the the pinto beans weren't dancing, but I, I, I saw them, okay? And this experience has been an experience. Um, that's basically all I have to say. So it was my brother's 14th birthday, and I was just saying happy birthday to him, when suddenly this orange light started swirling around him. It's now day 372, but back then, I was heading over to Allison's house, and then right in front of my eyes, he started disintegrating, kind of burning in the orange light, and when I came there, we kind of saw this jar under all the ashes and stuff and then in the end he turned into a pile of ashes just like what we found on the first day of this mess so we, we were like kind of thinking to ourselves what is this and then we noticed on the sides of the jar there were hieroglyphics i had no idea what was happening and the way we knew this is because in social studies we were studying stuff anyway so we were kind of examining the jar we had found the jars and we saw the hieroglyphics. Those hieroglyphics, those are the secret, those are the key. I was a part of a team who was working very diligently around the clock to solve it. The decoding of the hieroglyphs. What will we find out? We don't know yet. Anyway, so we were kind of
of examining the jar, but then I pointed out the fact that it had a lid on top and it was kind of sealed a bit. So when we opened it up, there was like this kind of yogurty substance. And then we thought, remember that meal kind of thing that Landon made us about the, the yogurt and the beans? And we were like, did we just eat somebody? Okay, so people thought and that I was uh, tricking them into being cannibals, but it came from my fridge, so I know it's edible. Um, well, it was day 35 and everyone was bored and Ella and Stella said that they found some candy and I was just sitting on the ground playing with a ball. When I went into the fridge, I saw that there was enough apples, chocolate covered apples for everyone, so I was kind of suspicious of that, but I didn't think about it that much, so I ate one, and it was an onion inside, a chocolate covered onion, and I think the pranksters were Ella and Snow. I went to go eat an Oreo, and I noticed it smelled like mint. We had to take apart the Oreo and take out the filling in the middle and replace it with toothpaste. Right when I bit into that Oreo cookie, I was so looking forward to it, that sweet Oreo. <laughs> but instead, some people thought it would be funny to put some toothpaste in it. Um, the, their expressions on their face when they bit into the cookie and the onion were crazy. <laughs> I really could care less, but some of my other friends cared a lot and they want their good revenge. And then um, I went to go get a chocolate apple and then I bit into it and then for some reason I started crying. I didn't know, but then I realized that it was an onion. Alan bit into the apple. It was hilarious. His face looked like he was kind of constipated, but <laughs> it's okay. He was like, and he was like, Bleh. Uh, Charlotte said she's gonna revenge us because she's mad about it. And she said we're not friends anymore, so. Um, it was kind of sad, but I was the first one to find out and no one had talked to me about it, so I wanted to see what everyone else would say about it. And then Charlotte, she was like really mad and she knew it was us because me and Stella are the funniest. <laughs> just a few days ago and we noticed that all the kids were taking all our candy and we knew we had to get payback. So we set up a trap and we put fish heads in this little candy and we got the fish heads from a sushi store that was nearby. We headed back and then we baked it into the candy and then we set it up and the next day the kids came in and they ate the fish heads and then they started throwing up everywhere. <laughs> I ate fish heads! I ate fish heads! Heads! Oh, and it was not normal candy. I thought I was gonna get the regular sugar, the rainbow starburst, or fish head sardines! It's disgusting just thinking about it. Some of my friends helped me bake the fish heads into the candy since we thought it would be pretty funny. <laughs> the second I bit in the stars, I had a sardine head in my mouth. My mouth! My mouth! <laughs> what is this world come to? Ugh, that makes me sick just thinking about it. Stop! Safety is important because say you're uh, needing to cut a piece of wood or something, right? And you're not being careful and being safe, you can just take the saw and push your fingers just like that. You gotta really think these things through because then you can't play maybe some sports or you can't play a little piano or um, a guitar. Or... So safety matters. And we made a training video on this very subject. Drawn up with a pen, your life ends in just one moment. All that he will see gazing through the trees to I didn't have any first aid things, but I knew who did 
who knew how to work with the first aid kit, and I know Ella can. So I grabbed my kit, because like anything could happen. So I grabbed it, I ran right over there, and I saw blood. My leg, my leg. <laughs> oh no, it's blood. I grabbed my belt and I made it into a tourniquet and wrapped it around his leg and then applied pressure. So oh my gosh. Also, I walked out of my house and then I heard this weird noise and then I saw some green slime fall on the floor. So I walked towards it, like the horror movies, but that's not the point. I walked towards it and then it was in hieroglyphics, just like the jar. Also, I walked out of my house, I heard a weird noise and then some green slime dropped on the floor, right? And then just like the jar, it was in hieroglyphics. So I, uh, took my mom's car, drove to the school, and broke in. I went to my social studies teacher's classroom and looked through all of her stuff, which is really fun. And I found the hieroglyphic alphabet. I went back to my house with the car. I decoded it and it said, beware. So I think we're in trouble. Beware, beware of the amazing things that could happen. Beware of the instructions that could come on how we can get our parents back. We have to listen. ingested it and that's why we got sick it wasn't Landon's cooking but yeah it was his dirty kitchen because that rat was running all over it Ew. I just knew that rat had something to do with the kids who didn't disappear because they ate the green goo that got into the yogurt and that came from the rat we knew the rat was around Landon's kitchen. I really had to get it. That rat was disgusting. I also saw that rat outside at the park rolling in that green goo. But we knew we had to get it because we saw it in Landon's dirty kitchen. I got my net, Ben got his net, and Carmen was gonna scare the rat into the net. But then, Charlotte and Ben had the nets on the side. I saw that the rat wasn't too concerned. So, I snuck up right there, I grabbed the rat, and I said, I got you! I hate rats, especially that green, juicy rat. Ugh. There was evidence, according to Dr. Blackwood, that that rat was con being controlled by the aliens. Oh, this crazy alien. So I cut the rat open, and all I saw was metal, from outer space. Green goop everywhere, robotics, and that's all it was. So it wasn't a real rat. I think those aliens don't have a neck and they're green and slimy and dripping all around and they got no hair and they're like just one big glob of goo. I examined the green goop under my microscope and all I saw were tiny nanobots. We found Jana! She was knocked out! I don't know what we're gonna do! It turns out Tristan's a robot! It's a robot! Oh my god! Okay guys, calm down, calm down. I am calm, I am calm! Okay, okay, I'm calming down. Where's Jana and where's Tristan? Jana's over there in the bushes. We got all the information out of her before she passed out. We gotta help Jana and take care of her injuries. Uh, Tristan is by Mr. Smith's farm. And he's gone. Okay, everybody. We have a crisis. There are robots among us. They're out of space. We know there's a robot rat. And now it turns out Tristan is a robot. We don't know where the real Tristan is. You could be locked up somewhere. Or out there. In outer space. What we need to find out is 
who is real and who is an imposter. Now we know that Tristan has wires up his nose if we look really closely. So we need to look at everybody's nose. I mean everyone's nose. We got to get to the bottom of this. Period. You can look at my nose first. Any fingers? Okay. So here is the science about how to put the ashes and the people yogurt back together. We found it in the laboratory. Sally broke into where they were investigating the green goo before this whole mess happened. You know, who was the top scientist? Well, uh, we were discovering some pretty darn interesting stuff. Apparently, our green goo is like a glue to glue our ashes to our people yogurt. And when that happens, we think people will rematerialize. And that'll give us our parents, our grandparents, our siblings, our puppies, our nieces, our nephews, our cousins, everybody back. Okay, so from what we have so far, we figured out what I think is the first line of this hieroglyphic message. It says, follow these instructions and heed them well. Wait a second. This must mean that the, this hieroglyphic message is the instruction to getting our parents back. I read that July 4th this year is Aphelion Day. And that is when the Earth is farthest from the Sun. You said there was something in the hieroglyphics about that. Maybe. That's the day when we have to bring the people back to life. You know, the people that disappeared and whatever. Maybe, maybe we have to put the stuff from the container into the ashes and mix it together on Aphelion Day to reconstitute them. They'll be alive again. Ha, huh. that's it. I am so sorry to interrupt your meeting, but we made a breakthrough with the kids in the puzzle. Yeah, like Samantha said, kids figured out that at the bottom of the jar it said, if you want to live past your 14th date, you must submit one to a shorter fate. It sounds like you have to kill somebody, but it might also mean like they have to get shorter or something. Okay guys, I have a jar for this Cat 5 cable, so that we can shove it up Tristan's nose, into the receptacle I planted up there. And, and connect to his inner core, so we can crack the alien computer code. All it will take is some binary sight. You know, ones and zeros. We think that the aliens are using more than ones and zeros. And I think I can figure out how to crack it. When I say crack it, I mean crack it. Out there. I wanna know where the real Tristan is. What are the aliens doing to him? Let's show the wire up the robot Tristan knows pronto so we can decode all this stuff. I'm gonna feed the robot my wharf recipe so he's gonna bark. Okay, I'm in his inner cortex. It looks like there's some weird code in here. It looks like he's thinking, when you win, what? It really looks like that. It's using some kind of hieroglyphics. Like the ones on the the ones on the jar. You know the jars with all the hieroglyphics? Oh my gosh. These aliens have been involved with Earth for millions and millions of years. It says Earthlings? Stop destroying the Earth? It looks like they're trying to get us to create a new planet where we're not polluting or destroying it. I don't think they're gonna allow us to bring back the adults. See a glitch in their code. I think I can crack it. Hang in there, robot Tristan. Don't turn off yet. Tristan was. 
when the robot told us. It was in a crypt in the bottom of an abandoned mine shaft. And when we found Tristan, it turns out that he was really thirsty, not to mention hungry. Apparently aliens do not care about hydration. So, so I followed the directions on the hieroglyphic thing, and I added the ashes with my parents' yogurty stuff and the green goo, and I turned on the microwave the way the instructions said, you know, the hieroglyphic instructions, and all of a sudden this gurgling started happening. And then my parents were going, ooh, coming back to life. And when they finally came back to life, they didn't know where they were. And I said, Mom, Dad, you're back. And they said, where were we? And I said, in that yogurt container, and in that little bowl where your ashes were. And I explained it all to them. And told them that the aliens allowed us to bring them back on the condition that they would learn from their mistakes and, and learn from us on how we made the Earth sustainable from when we were gone, when they were gone. And they were happy to advise. And they were so proud of us. It was a great day. So I followed the instructions and mixed the ashes and yogurt and green goo together using the microwaves and all that. And all of a sudden, all this gurgling noise started. And my mom came back to life. And she said, what happened? You look older. And it's summer. And we both started to cry. It was amazing. So I had to tell my parents about the hieroglyphic message and that the aliens left us and how if we didn't keep on remaining sustainable, they would go back to the way things turned out. I told my parents too, and so did every other kid, that the Earth would not be sustainable if we went back to the way that we were running in. My parents did not want to disappear again, so they listened to us and they read the hieroglyphics. And they realized that we figured out how to run the Earth sustainably and not ruin it. So all the adults made a pact to learn from what we learned. My parents were so proud that we, the kids, learned how to clean up their mess. Isn't it funny that Reconstitution came on Independence Day? I mean, Reconstitution Day, think about it. Because July 4th, 2022, is when the sun was closest to the Earth, and that's when we gained our independence from the aliens. And our parents came back. So we had Reconstitution Day on Independence Day. What a coincidence. First of all, I just want to say that I feel really bad for accusing Landon of feeding us other people. Because in the end, it's not what happened. And if it wasn't for him feeding us the food with the green goo in it, you know, the rat stuff, then we never would have figured this all mess out. So technically, Landon's a hero. So I woke up from my coma. That was about three weeks long, and Nana was there by my bedside. And she explained to me that Tristan was a robot. Honestly, I wouldn't have never, I would have never guessed that, but anyway. So, Nana told me that Tristan was a robot and the entire ordeal with the aliens kidnapping him. So, supposedly it was the 4th of July and it was the one day I could bring my parents back. So that's what I did. And to be honest with you, it was a pretty darn good day. Finally, this is over. The aliens gave us instructions in hieroglyphics. Why hieroglyphics, you ask? Was because the last time they were in contact with the Earth was during the time of the Egyptians. And hieroglyphics was the way they communicated. Well, they saw that the Earth was being ruined and that's why they came back. And they communicated, communicated in hieroglyphics because that's what they knew. So they made the adults disappear so the kids could figure out how to solve the climate problems. And only if they did, would they let the adults come back. Well, we did it! We used solar power. We used wind power. We used water power. We stopped polluting. We stopped dumping things into our ocean and sending trash into space. And we were nicer to each other. So as long as the adults learn from us kids, they won't disappear again. And everything will be fine and dandy. Thank you, Reconstitution Day. Because this is the day we reconstituted our parents and gained independence from the aliens.
by my dad's car. Do you know how to drive? Yes. Oops, to our house. And how'd you get the food? By car. <laughs> how'd you get to the restaurant? Uh, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. I went to the food store. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and I was just sitting on the ground playing with the ball. And then, um, You're both wrong. It's a question of hearsay. Sir, we're over here. <laughs> Camera's rolling. Action. Um, the their expressions on their face when they bit into the cookie and the onion were crazy. <laughs> it looks like um it looks like they just swallowed a bug. <laughs> So I <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. You're my eyes. No, I... You know, all the people that turned 14 last year, they all disappeared. Oh. January 2nd. On January 2nd. Camera's rolling. <laughs>